I realized that I had my equation typed in wrong. I was wondering why my graph was looking a little strange. So now hopefully my graph will look a little better. There we go. So there we go. So you can see this is my region R right in here. This is that top part is my region S. So I'm going to find this point of intersection first. So second calc intersect with my cursor. First curve, second curve, guess. So this point of intersection is going to be 0.178. And you always want it, since it's a bound, you want to round it out to about four or five the decimal places. Because um, you're going to use that as a bound, 0.7811. So now I want to find this other point of intersection right here. So I'll go under second trace again, intersect. And this is going to be 1, 0.25. So now that I have my bounds, first of all, I'm going to find the area of region R first. So region R is what's highlighted in yellow right here. So first of all, I have to identify what function's on the top. And notice that is labeled as my g of x. So g of x is the function that's on the top for region R. So g of x, remember, I have loaded under y2. So then the area is going to be the area under the curve. Again, my bounds are going to go from 0 to 0 0.1782. And again, g of x is on the top, so it's going to be my g of x minus f of x dx. Now remember, I have g of x loaded under y2. So when I go back to my home screen on my calculator, I can go to my alpha window, option 4, 0, to 0.1782. It's going to be y2. Oops. Minus y1. So up about 0 0.0648. So that's the area of region R. So now to calculate the region of area S, I'm looking at the orange region. So notice in here, the function that's on the top is my f of x. So the area of region S then is going to be, again, my f of x, because you always want top minus bottom, g of x. And again, look at the x, the point of intersection furthest to the left. The x value, that's going to be your lower bound of 0.17822. The point of intersection furthest to the right will be your upper bound. So now remember, where is f of x loaded? f of x is loaded under y1. g of x is loaded under y2. So then on my home screen, when I go to calculate the area, it's going to be my lower bound of 0 0.17822, upper bound of 1. And again, f of x is loaded under y1, so it'll be my alpha trace y1 minus alpha trace y2 dx. So 0 0.4182. So that's how you can actually do the area under the curve for um, using your calculator. Now, at sometimes there's, it's not possible to see the function on the top minus the function on the bottom. So in some cases, what we're going to have to do, we're going to integrate with respect to y rather than x. So what this happens then, what you're going to have to do is rewrite your function so they're in the form of x equals. So you'll have to solve for x if you're asked to integrate with respect to y instead of x. So in this case, we're going to be looking at the curve that lies furthest to the right minus the curve that falls to the left. So when you're looking at your diagram again, notice you're looking at your function furthest to the right minus left. So instead of doing top minus bottom, you're going to be doing right minus left. And your bounds now are going to be terms of y. This lower bound will be your um, y value that's on the bottom. This is the y value that will be on the top. 
So you can see by the illustration, again, this is your C value. That's what I mean by being on the bottom. This is the one that's on the top. That's your D value. So now what you have to do is identify the function right minus left. So here's an example where they gave you the graph. So they gave you the graph of natural log of x and x minus 2. So I'm going to call f of x as the natural log of x. g of x is equal to x minus 2. So clearly this is your um, g of x, that's your line. This is your natural log function, that's your f of x. So we're allowed to use the calculus. They want us to do it to the integrate with respect to x and with respect to y. First of all, you have to find your bounds. You have to find your points of intersection. So I'll go to my y equals. I'll type in f of x under y1. So I'm going to label that's going in y1. This is going in under y2. So y1 is the natural log of x. g of x is under y2, which is x minus 2. I may have to adjust my window. Let me expand this out here. Oh, I have accidentally have an exponent here. Hang on. Help if I typed in the right, right thing. There. Here's my y1. Like now, oh, I still haven't didn't hit delete enough. Okay, so let me find this point of intersection down here. So I'll go to second trace, intersect. So this point of intersection down here is going to be point. 1585 and negative 1.8414. I'm going to find my other point of intersection. I'm going to expand out my window a little bit, so I'll make that x max of 5. Find this point of intersection right here. So second trace, intersect. So this is going to be 3.14619, 1.14619. So now that I have my points of intersection, I can answer part A. So this is just integrating with respect to x. So this will be a top minus bottom. So again, the function on the top is my f of x, which is my natural log of x. So the area is going to be my antiderivative. Again, my lower bound is the x value, the 0.1585. Upper bound is 3.14619. Again, the function on the top is my f of x minus g of x dx. So then using my calc, you remember where I have f of x loaded, it's under y1. So my alpha window, option 4, lower bound is 0.1585. Upper bound is 3.414. 619. And again, it's going to be my y1 minus y2. So it's going to be about 1.949. So now it also wants me to integrate with respect to y. So the first thing you have to do with respect for y is you have to solve each equation for x. Because remember, to integrate with respect to y, the equations have to be in the form of x equals. So my one equation, remember, is y is equal to the natural log of x. So to solve for x, I'm going to have to raise both sides to the base of e. So e to the y is equal to x. And I'll call this my g of y. So g of y is equal to e to the y. So then my second one, y is equal to x minus 2 solve for x, I'm just going to add 2, so x is equal to y plus 2. So this is, I'll call this my f of y. So this is where I want to do right minus left. So as you can see, the function on the right now is my linear function. So then when I integrate to find this area, it's going to be my f of y 
minus g of y. So again, f of y is my line. That's the one furthest on the right, minus left. So now your bounds now, when you look at your lower bound, it's going to be the y coordinate. So it's going to be negative 1.8414. The upper bound is going to be the y coordinate at the top, the 1.14619. And when you, when you plug this in your calculator, again, you have to reload your functions under y equals. So under y1, I'm going to type my f of y. Now, you can't change the letters you're typing in the calculator. So you, instead of typing a y, you're still going to have to use that x, but it's going to be x plus 2. Under y2, you're going to have to type in that e to the x. And then when you type it in, your um, alpha window, your integral, your lower bound is going to be negative 1.8414. Upper bound is going to be 1.14619. Again, where did I load my function on the right? That's my line, which is the x plus 2. That's under my y2. My y1, excuse me. So alpha y1 minus alpha y2 dx. And notice I get the same answer. So they'll tell you, or sometimes just you're not going to be able to tell if it's top, minus, or bottom. Just remember, if it is in terms of y, you always have to do the right minus left.